is truly present in this place. So bless us, God, that we might preach. Bless us, God, that we might hear your holy word. Bless us, God, that we might praise your holy name the way my God deserves to be praised. The way my God, you deserve to be worshipped and adored. Bless us, God, with a word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 From the Gospel of St. Luke, the first chapter, we have prepared a word to preach and we call it blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored. In the form of the angel Gabriel, God came to visit a virgin in Nazareth named Mary. He greeted her by saying, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When Mary heard him, she said, What manner of salutation is this? wondering what the angel was getting at. And he told her that she would conceive a son and that she would call his name Jesus. And that Jesus would be great and that he would be the son of the highest and he would be the son of God. He would reign over Israel forever and ever and there would be no end to his kingdom. With all of this, Mary's only question was, how is this going to happen considering that I am a virgin? Now, many of us would have had more questions than that. Many of us would have wondered, well, who are you and how'd you get up in here? Many of us would have been questioning, is this really an angel or am I losing my mind? Is this some sort of trick? Yeah. I mean, we pray all the time for the Holy Ghost to come upon us. We sing all the time about God having angels who watch over us. But if they truly would come upon us, how many of us would be as cool about it as Mary was? When that same angel Gabriel previously went to John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, earlier in the same chapter, he went to him to tell him that his wife would give birth to their son, who would prepare the people for the coming of Jesus Christ. Zacharias was certainly not as cool about it as was Mary. He, you see, he was the priest, and it was his job to burn incense in the temple. And while everybody was out in the pews praying, Gabriel came into Zacharias and told him about the coming birth of John the Baptist. Yes. And he questioned, how am I supposed to know that this is the truth? Yes. As if to say, you could be lying. He, he said, I am an old man, and heaven knows my wife is an old woman. He said, give me a sign so I'll know that you are really an angel and that you are telling the truth. And Gabriel said, I am here. He said, I am the very presence of God. Basically, he said, how dare you? Because you do not believe, you shall be made dumb, and you shall be made mute, unable to speak, and unable to hear until the child is born. Now here, we have an interesting enigma. We have a bit of a conundrum. What we have here is a problem that is not easily understood. On the one hand, we have an elderly man, married, a priest, who is supposed to deliver the word from God. 
And when he received the word that he and his wife would bring forth a child, that he would have a son, and that son would be filled with the Holy Ghost and would prepare the people for the coming of the Lord, the priest doubted. And on the other hand, we have a young virgin told that she is going to bring forth a child before she even loses her virginity. And not just any child will she be bringing forth. She has been told that she shall bring forth the Son of God. The priest says, how do I know this is for real? But the virgin says, let it be so according to thy word. Zacharias is full of doubt. Mary is full of faith. You know, when we are full of doubt, nothing good can come out of us. If your heart is overflowing and filled with doubt, there is nothing good that's going to come out of you. Everything come out of you is going to be despair. When your heart is full of doubt, everything that comes out of you is going to say, we cannot do this. When your heart is full of doubt, everything that comes out of you is negativity. Wow. But when we have faith, when we have been willing to put our faith into action, that's when God can use us to tear down strongholds. That's when God can use you to build up something that is mighty. Mary was willing, and she said, God, let it be so, according to thy word. But we have to wonder, what makes one so unfaithful and full of doubt? And what makes the other so faithful and willing to accept? How does God then respond to our doubt, and how does God respond to our faith? Yeah. First of all, there is one thing that we can see with Zechariah. In verse 13, when Gabriel greets him, Gabriel says, Fear not, your prayers have been answered. Right. Apparently, Zechariah had been praying to have a child. But when God delivers, he's shocked. Wow. He's praying to have a child. And when God says you're going to have a child, he does not believe. How many of us are praying for God to come through? And yet we don't really believe that he will. Wow. We pray so often for God to be our provider. And yet when God gives us the provision, we don't recognize that it came from God. God has answered your prayer, and suddenly I'm still praying as if God didn't do just what he said he was going to do. I was talking to a woman one time who told me how her, her, her daughter, her daughter was about 15 years old. And she said that when her daughter was three, four years old, something like that, she had a serious disease. Wow and was sick, and was laying on her deathbed, and how she was in so much pain, and how she stood there, she held her baby night after night after night after night, and God never answered her prayer. I said, hold on, back up. How old was your daughter? When your daughter was in the hospital, she said four. And I said, how old is your daughter right now? And she said, her daughter is 15. I just looked at her, I said, sister, God bless you. Sometimes you gotta know when to walk away. Some people, they don't see it. If the evidence is standing right in the face, you got to know when God is answering your prayer. Amen. We always pray for God to bless us to get a job. And when we get the job, we are like we got it on our own. <laughs> So there's no need to come to church and give them thanks. We act like we didn't make our money all on our own, so there's no reason to give God his 10%. We pray for the presence of God in each and every worship experience. And when the Holy Ghost comes, when the Holy Ghost fills somebody up, we turn around and look and say, what's gotten into him? We turn around and look, what is she shouting for? We turn around and look and wonder what somebody is crying for. You pray for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost came. Pray. You pray for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost touched somebody's heart. When you pray, God answers your prayer. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Oh, sometimes it ain't the answer you expect to get, but you got to ask God to tune your spirit with his Holy Spirit, and you can see his kingdom come right here on earth just as it is in heaven. Yes, sir. Wondering yes. why somebody shouted. Yes. Were well, you praying for the Holy Ghost? Yes. I'm trying to tell you, God is listening when you pray. Yes. Your words are not falling on their ears. Yes. You know, the old folks used to sing a song, one of those old Negro spirituals. They used to say, King Jesus is a listening when you pray. Yes. He's waiting to hear you, comfort and cheer you. King Jesus is a listening when you pray. In Mark 11 it says, Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you shall receive it and you shall have it. Believe that God's going to bless you and you're going to be blessed. You know, when you pray for the presence of the Lord, you've got to believe that the presence of the Lord is here. God is a very present help in times of trouble. The Lord is present in our joy. The Lord is present in our sadness. The Lord is present every time we call upon his name. Yeah. So when you pray for the Lord to make a way out of nowhere, you've got to believe that your road is going to get a little light. You've got to believe that your way will be made just a little more clear. You've got to believe that Jesus is the way. When you pray, you've got to believe. Yes. And when you pray for the Lord to fight your battles, you've got to believe that the Lord is going to make all your enemies to be your footstool. The Lord will put all your enemies to flight. A thousand shall fall at your left and ten thousand shall fall at your right. And the battle shall not even get next to you because the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. When you pray, you've got to believe. Zacharias prayed. He prayed that God would bless him with a son. Yet, he did not believe that the Lord would do it. Too many of us are praying, and we really don't expect God to show up and be God. And when he does, we don't believe. Right. Zacharias didn't believe it, and Gabriel said, because you don't believe, you shall be dumb, and you shall be mute. Wow. He was unable to hear, he was unable to speak. All because of his unbelief. There are many of us who don't believe. Mm -hmm. And because of our, un our unbelief, our disbelief, we have been made dumb. Wow. And, and the problem is we've been made dumb, mm -hmm. but we can still speak. Right. Yes. You got that? Yeah. yeah. Ain't nothing worse than the dumb person who won't shut up. Because of our unbelief, we lose our ability to hear from God, and yet we keep running off at the mouth. We lose our ability to know and understand the word. If you can't hear from God, it don't matter what you say, you just talking loud and saying nothing. Yes, sir. If you can't hear from God, it don't matter what you say. It's like you just have a voice full of nothing because you have no faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes, it is. Without faith, it is impossible to praise the Lord. Without faith, it is impossible to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Without faith, it's impossible to speak a word from God. Everything you do, you do it in vain. Every prayer you make is now falling on deaf ears. Any praise you try to give is only praise that you praise in yourself. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Come on. It is impossible to be in his favor. It is impossible for you to even be heard. Without faith, you don't have ears to hear. You don't have a voice to talk. You don't even have legs to walk. That was Zechariah. Now Mary, on the other hand, was walking in the favor of God. When Gabriel greets her, 
He says, fear not. Mm -hmm. Thou hast found favor with God. To be in God's favor means that you are receiving kindness from him. It means that you are in his good graces and you are a recipient of his grace. I want you to know that Zacharias was in God's faith, but the problem is he didn't know. Too many of us are like Zacharias when we need to be more like Mary. Gabriel telling her that she was in God's favor, that was not shocking news to her. Mary said, well, I already know that. She's, her, her being told that she was in God's favor, she already recognized that. And when we know that we are in God's favor, we can then be spiritually productive. Right. We can be used by God to do great things. Mary was highly favored and blessed among men and women. Yeah. You know, like the Clark sisters used to sing that song. Mm -hmm. We are blessed and highly favored. Yeah. When you're blessed and highly favored, you expect to hear a word from God. Yeah. When you're blessed and highly favored, to hear a word from God ain't no surprise to you. When you're blessed and highly favored, you expect the Lord to send his angels to comfort you with a holy word. It ain't no shock when his angels come to you. When you're blessed and highly favored, you know that God will answer your prayer. You know that the Lord will fight your battles. You know that the Lord has angels watching over you. So you expect to hear his word when he says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You ain't shocked. You say, I know that the Lord is my strength. When That's he says the battle Free. shall not come near you, you say, no, I know that. Because the Lord said he already has my back. When people try to put things in front of you to block your way, to make you homeless, you say, I know that ain't going to be the case. When God comes to you and says, I'm going to bless you beyond measure, you say, I already know that. And to do you no harm, you Amen. expect to be blessed. Amen. You expect to be favored yep. because you know you got that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Yes. So you ain't shocked when an angel of God comes to you. You know that the Lord has angels watching over you. That's why with all the things that Job went through. Oh. Job, huh. he never lost his faith. Yeah, yeah. He said, I know my Redeemer lives, and I know he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Yeah. And he just wasn't thinking about going to heaven anyhow. He was thinking about heaven coming right here on earth. He said, though after the skin worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh, Shall I see God? Yes, sir. Yeah, they might slay me, but I know I'm going to see God in the land of the living. Yeah, they might come against me, but I know I'm going to see God the goodness of the Lord come in on. the land of the living. Yes, sir. I shall see God whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall be whole yes. and not another. Right. I'm telling you, when you know that God will bless you. When you know that God favors you, there is nothing that you cannot accomplish. You can do whatsoever you set your heart upon. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're blessed and highly favored, yeah. you expect to be used by God. God is the one who blesses. God is the one that whose favor you seek. And when you are blessed and highly favored, it is only so God can use you. Wow. It is only, I mean, you have only been blessed so that you can be a vessel of God. It is only then for the glory of God, only for you to carry and present Christ to everyone whom you meet. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I know. I got the favor of God. 
I've got faith that the Lord is blessing me right here. The Lord just keeps on blessing me. The Lord is blessing me right now, and I know that I am favored in the eyes of God. I am in God's grace. I am blessed and highly favored. But Zechariah responded with doubt because he never expected God to answer his prayer. He had no faith. And because he had no faith, God took his voice away. Mary responded with faith. And because she was believed, she was blessed and highly favored. And because of her faith, God gave Mary an even bigger voice. And God gave Mary a song, and he planted a song in her heart, you can say. And she said, my soul does magnify the Lord. Yes. And my spirit uh -huh. has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has done to me great things. God has already done great things for you. Yes. Instead of asking God for what you want, you ought to thank God for what he's already done. You ought to bless his name for what he already Pray. brought you. Oh. You ought to praise his Pray. name Pray. for Pray. all he's already taught you. Pray. You ought to bless oh. his name for every time he allows you to get up. You ought to praise his name for Pray. every victory you already won. You ought to be willing to bless God because you're still here in the land Mary said, he has shown strength with his own. He scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. She said he had put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty handed he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. In order to be like Mary, blessed and highly favored, we must be full of the faith that allows God to use us, that we can be spiritually productive. You got to submit yourself to God. Mary says, Behold, the handmaid mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. She is saying, Look, God, here I am. Mm -hmm. And I give myself to thee. Yes, yes. She said, Lord, here I am. Mm -hmm. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Yes. She says, Lord, here I am, and your word declares that I was always going to be blessed. So I feel blessed even when I recognize that some things that I don't have, God, I still know you've already blessed me. Even when I know I ain't everything that I ought to be, still, God, I know that you blessed me. Even though I know that sin is always knocking on my door, tell me to do the things that are ungodly. I know.
to the Word of God. Give me, okay? Give me the Word. Zacharias got it, but Mary said, Be it unto me according to your Word. Yes. When the Word of God says, I'll never leave you, no. I'll never forsake you, no. even when you feel alone, be it unto me according to your word. Even when you robbing Peter to pay Paul, the word of God says the cattle on a thousand hills belong to your father. Your answer ought to be, be it unto me according to your word. When things come up against you, but the word of God says that you got faith, you can say, move mountain and be thrown into the midst of the sea. You ought to say, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Let your word 